<laughs> well, that's still on hard. Fred, you sure did rope that darn critter, and in good fashion, too. You starting to get the idea, little beaver? You see, son, you just dropped your loop over the calf's head. It's easy to do once you've had to practice. They practice, you betcha. How'd you like to ride into Devil's Hole with me? Why, sure. Let's go to town. Today's the day that the news bulletin comes out. Huh? Why are you so all fired anxious to see that newspaper? Do you read Harriet's hints to the heartbroken? <laughs> well, naturally. I... Huh? Say... <laughs> <laughs> Buskin trips himself up faster than you trip him up steer, Red Rider. Well, if that, with all that's been going on around Devil's Hole lately, that newspaper should make pretty interesting reading. I'll race you from here to Hangman's Oak. How about it? We don't beat him, you on Thunder, Red Rider. Well, you never will unless you try. Well, there ain't no use of me trying to race either one of you on this dad burn lazy hay burner that I'm a riding. But I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll start you out. Well, that's fair enough. Well, go ahead. Get your horse, Abel. All right, now get your hat. <laughs> One for the money, two for the show, three to get ready, and four to go. Red, thanks to you. Over the after, do you know? Can't imagine. Just carrying passengers. You and your sister were the only passengers, huh, Jerry? Well, I've told you, Naroki. What did they expect to get from you two? Did they expect that you was carrying that newspaper you published around in your pockets? Well, anyhow, I've got a pretty good idea who arranged this stick-up. Frenchie Beaumont. She knows Sis and I go over to Mason City every Friday to get the Eastern papers. Jerry, you shouldn't talk like that. Libby's right, fella. 
Unless you're looking to end up like a few of our other local citizens, burned down by one of Frenchy's dueling pistols. Well, I'm sick and tired of Frenchy's legalized murders. And I'm sick and tired of that hotel of his, packed with gunslingers and crooks. You know, it's bad enough talking that way, but take a tip from me. Don't go to publishing anything like that in the news bulletin if you haven't got a few facts to back it up. Oh, don't worry about that, Red. You see, when Dad died, his will made me the publisher of the paper. Of course, I do let my brother write things occasionally. Come on, Libby. We still have a paper to get out, and besides, we've got to report this to the sheriff. I can save you a few steps there, too. We're going to town anyway. I'll tell the sheriff about this for you. Thanks, Red. You know, I was just thinking it's a good thing you three happen to be around. Hey, <laughs> but if you're asking me, partner, I'd say it was a darn good thing we happened to be around. <laughs> Tom. Oh, Tom, come here a minute. Yes, Gary? I want this in a page one box. Law and order, a joke in devil's hole. Citizens, things have gone too far. This is a warning to certain newly arrived gunslingers to take French leave or risk the consequences later. You can't publish this. French leave? That's like begging Frenchy Beaumont. No argument now, Tom. Set it up. But you know your sister's told you time and time again. Never mind Libby. She's so upset now about that raid on the stagecoach, she's resting at home. So today, I'm running this paper. All right. Publishing this? The girl has too much sense, Blackjack. But her brother, he is young and rash. Yeah, ain't it a shame? He don't know nothing about dueling, poor kid. No, my friend. No duel this time. This is a little task for you. Everyone knows young Brutus has a hot temper. If you went down and resented don't you think he might be encouraged to lose that temper? Lose his temper? Lose his temper and go for his gun first. Check, boss. He sure might. Copy of a news bulletin just off the press. Yeah, read that. And after you do, let's all do something about it. I'll take a copy of that paper. Come on, come on, let me have a paper. Take it easy, kid. So, you don't like Frenchy's Hotel, huh? 
And there's nothing in there about Frenchy's Hotel. Oh, no? You don't have to be no professor to figure out what you mean. I told you there's nothing in there about Frenchy's Hotel. No, it's palaver about gunslingers living there. I live at the Parisian Hotel. You mean to call me a gunslinger? Because if you are, I'm calling you a dirty liar. Blackjack, you better take that back. Sure, I'll take it back. If you can make me. You heard me. I want an apology. You know how to get one, don't you? Say your gun hand pronto. We'll just keep that here till you've gone. What right you got in the fair and kid grabbed for his gun first? Strange. It's still in his holster. You better leave now, Blackjack, before you get in some real trouble. <laughs> trouble. Jerry, don't you know better than to make unsupported accusations like that? Unsupported? Why, ever since Frenchy Beaumont opened up that hotel, Devil's Hole has been worse Now than look, Jerry. Already three of Devil's Hole's most solid citizens have lost their life to Frenchy in a fair gunfight. Are you aiming to be next? You call those murders fair? Gunning them down the way he did? Uh, well, new suits to neckties. He didn't shoot him in the back, did he? They was all shooting at the same time, wasn't they? Yes, facing each other, weren't they? In, in one of them duels that uh, Frenchy insists on fighting? You know, you got a break today when he just sent that vulture of his after you. That should be a lesson. Well, I'll be seeing you, Jerry. I hope. That man be on plenty work, you betcha. He's got plenty to be worried about, Little Beaver, plenty. I think what we should ride over and see his sister. Your dad burned right. He just left the office. Here he comes down. You imbeciles, stay here. Have a moment of your valuable time. Mr. Brooks, that editorial you ran in your newspaper today, I seem to have the feeling that it was, shall we say, aimed at me. Your name's not mentioned. A newspaper has that advantage. It can slander a man's good reputation without actually printing his name. All right, so? I feel that I have been grossly insulted by you. So, I am demanding satisfaction. Please, Mr. Brooks. You 
can see. I am not even wearing a gun. Very convenient. Never packing a gun. If I were one of these Western guns, what I would have done? I would have blown your head off with a 45. That talk's cheap enough. However, my young friend, you are quite fortunate that I am a gentleman, a New Orleans gentleman, and my breeding restrains me from doing anything more than giving you the opportunity to blow my head off at the same time. If you were even half a man, you'd settle it here and now. Am I to take it that you are too cowardly to beat me in a duel, Brutes? I'll meet you any time, any place, duel or any way you want. How extremely courteous of you. Tomorrow at Hangman's Oak, one hour after sunrise. Good afternoon, sir. You know I fixed supper myself and you hardly touched it. Jerry, what's wrong with you tonight? Oh, nothing more, John, I think. Probably just upset from being shot at in that stagecoach today. Darling, I know you're so much better than that. We uh, are engaged, you know. Well, it, it wasn't exactly pleasant, Marge. Libby almost fainted before it was over. I better get home and see how she feels. I'll see you tomorrow. Then you're not going to tell me. I've told you everything there is to tell. Good night. You certainly went out of your way to add that fourth notch to your pistol. You were on the hill, you saw us. It was completely fair, wasn't it? Someday, Frenchie, you're gonna pick on somebody your own size. Say, when I come back in, give me a hand, will you? Yeah, huh? Give me a hand with what? I think they'd both best take the spare room and get some rest, Red. I think March should, Duchess. For myself, I have a job to finish. The one Frenchie Beaumont started. Oh, you'll help me with it, Red, won't you? You know I will, Libby. March. March, you stay here with the Duchess. Red and I'll finish up what we have to do in town. Say, old timer, try and make yourself useful, will you? Go ask Sam to make pot tea. Well, I sure will, Rick. Sure will. 
Olivia, what do you hope to accomplish staying in town? Look, believe me, Reddy, it's not just... Well, it's not just because of Jerry, but... Frenchie Beaumont's got to be stopped. I agree with you. Decent people aren't safe in this town. Well, the only thing that I've got to fight him with is the weapon that my father left me. A newspaper. Well, a newspaper's a mighty powerful weapon if it's loaded with the right ammunition. Unfortunately, we don't have the ammunition yet. What do you mean? Well, under the code we live by here on the frontier, when two men settle an argument fairly, neither having his gun out first, it's not only legal, it's also considered honorable. Well, how about the hotel, Red? With every room filled with nothing in the world but gun slicks. And what about this epidemic of stage robberies, the holdups, the rustling? Don't you think Frenchy had his finger in there somewhere? I think Frenchy's using his hotel as a hideout for men wanted in other parts of the country, charging them high rates and using them for whatever suits his purpose. Yes. Well, thinking is one thing. Having proof is something else again. And your newspaper must have proof. All right, then. We'll get it. You bet we will. And while I'm figuring out how, young lady, you're going in that spare room and get some rest. The young Brooks untimely passing seems to have had quite an effect on the people of this town. I don't think we'll have any opposition anymore. You can start activities tonight. Right. Duchess, I'm going in and see Olivia a minute. Well, who's going to help me with my shopping? You got your pick of two, my dear aunt. Take your choice. That's getting bigger. Him can carry in more packages than me. Ha <laughs> ha, that's quick thinking, son. Duchess, your choice has been made for you. Come on, son, before she changes her mind. That skin? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Wait till I get that little fever out. Oh, Red, am I glad to see you. Is, is anything new? Well, I think I've got the solution. To rid this town of Frenchie? Yep, for a long, long time. What you said about this newspaper finally gave me the idea. Good. Expose him and they'll run him out of town. No, nothing like that. I'm figuring to take a leaf out of Frenchie's book. Do this the genteel way. Oh, Red, how can you? After what he's done. Well, they tell me there's more than one way of skinning a cat, and I can tell you there are more than two ways of skinning a pole cat. What do you mean? Folks around here are afraid to tell what little they do know about Frenchy because they don't want to face his nice little dueling pistols. Oh, well, there's certainly no question about that. I figure if we can somehow get Frenchy in jail, where those who can talk will feel safe talking, we can not only have him locked up, but we can get enough on him to keep him in jail for life. Honestly, Red, I don't know what you mean. Look, promise me you'll help me with the newspaper, and I'll promise you that we'll have that smooth-talking vulture in jail without even firing a shot. You're on. Little Beaver? Yes, Red Rider. Run up to the general store and bring Buckskin back here, will you? You betcha. Just as soon as we all get together, we'll start the ball and chain rolling. Oh, 
know, shotgun stick shenanigans, Red. You know that little scheme that you were scheming up? That kind of puts me in the middle, don't you think? You? Yes. Former Chief Deputy to Wild Bill Hickok? Why, this ought to be kindergarten stuff for you. Why are you waste breath on that big mouth, back brain, blabbering booby? I'll never know. Hey. Now, just a minute. Just a minute. Who, just who do you think you are called a booby? You, you booby. Hey, let me tell you something. Listen, you old saddle blister. I want to tell you something. I have got more brains than that one little bitty old finger than I have in my whole head. What was that again, Buck Ken? I was telling this old whelp, I got more brains in this one little old figure than I could... <laughs> Wait a minute. See, that don't sound right, does it? <laughs> it ought to sound right. It's the gospel truth. <laughs> now listen, you old whelp, I'll tell you... Oh. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. Hey, now you guys see what you made me do? Hey, you look at that. Oh, no. Nah. What are you laughing about, all right? <laughs> yeah, I'll see you. Yeah, I'll see you. <laughs> Let's see you. Well, I'll take a copy of that extra. Oh, I'm sorry, but uh, you see, they're all gone. What is that, then? Oh, this is, you can't have this in here. You see, that's the editor's copy. <laughs> Get it. Hey, wait a minute. You can't take that away from me. Now, listen, huh? Why, you old... What do you mean, push me around, you ugly galoot? No question about it, Frenchy. It's a clear-cut case of criminal liable. Uh, Joe, another bottle for Mr. Ivers. Uh, make it my private stuff, the Kentucky Purple. Thanks, Frenchie. There's no doubt in my mind. As an attorney, I tell you, you can sue that girl for a quarter of a million dollars and collect. In fact, with a circuit judge arriving here tomorrow, I'm advising you to let me serve a complaint on her this afternoon. So there's no delay in the trial. You say we can get a judgment for $250,000? Easily. 
But the girl has not that kind of money. Do they do here as they do in New Orleans? Issue what they call an attachment on all assets? They certainly do. So, in that case, I would become the owner of the news bulletin and my friend that I would like. But why? You couldn't sell that paper for more than $5,000. I do not wish to sell it. You see, I have a A newspaper molds public opinion, and public opinion elects sheriffs and tax collectors. Here he is, here he is. This court is now in session. Judge Prescott presiding. Be seated. wasted any time listening to highfalutin legal arguments. Besides, I don't understand Latin. I've been reading all the facts in this case, and facts are the only things I want to know. Now, who is this here, uh, plaintiff, Beaumont? Your Honor, this is Mr. Beaumont. I'm Henry W. Iverson, his counsel. I guess you're the defendant, Elizabeth Brooks. I am. Got a lawyer? I'm representing Miss Brooks, Judge. You? What are you doing in a courtroom? You ought to be out punching cows. That's what I'll be doing, too, Your Honor, just as soon as I've punched a few holes in Mr. Beaumont's alleged case. Objection. Nothing to object to, so keep quiet. But, Your Honor, he made a reference to our alleged case. Shut up. You mean to say you're denying that this libelous language appeared in Miss Brooks' newspaper? I mean to say that what you read in the newspaper you have there on the bench didn't hurt or even tarnish Mr. Beaumont's reputation. Your Honor, I object. <laughs> Counselor, you're going to object yourself right out to this courtroom. Now, looky here, Redhead. I got these glasses just so I could read. And what I read here in this newspaper, published by the defendant, and calling the plaintiff a horse thief, a sheep stealer, and a low-down, no-good, side-winding crook, well, it ain't exactly complimentary. As far as I'm concerned, he's entitled to all the damages he can collect. Your Honor, Mr. Beaumont's reputation could have been damaged only had the paper been distributed. And since Miss Brooks was convinced that she was wrong, and that Mr. Beaumont is actually a responsible, forward-looking, and honest citizen, she destroyed all the other copies, saving this single copy just for her files, and publishing the paper with a completely different front page. Your Honor, I... Young fella, how do you propose to prove that this was the only copy? Ask anyone in this courtroom, Your Honor, if the copies of the news bulletin they received yesterday contained one word about Frenchie Beaumont. Then how come this here plaintiff got hold of the one and only copy? By coming to the news bulletin office, brutally beating this old man who was left in charge of the office, and while he was prone on the floor, taking the paper and escaping with it. So, Judge, as long as Mr. Beaumont is here in court, on behalf of my client and Mr. Blodgett, who was beaten up, I'm preferring charges against Beaumont for assault and battery as well as petty larceny. Beaumont, come here. First, I'm dismissing this ridiculous libel suit right now. Second, I'm going to sentence you to three years in the state penitentiary for beating up an old man and stealing somebody else's property. My dear judge, I agree with you that I was mistaken about what appeared in the newspaper, but I call your attention to the fact that I did not lay a hand on Mr. Blodgett, nor did I take anything away from him. Why, of all the ridiculous... Blodgett, come here. Yes. Now, facts is facts, and facts is all I want. Did or did not this here Beaumont knock you down and take away the paper? Oh, no. He wasn't the one that done it. It was that fellow over yonder, Frenchie's bodyguard. Fuck, Hey, you there. Come here, pronto. Don't run it. Somebody get you. Sheriff, go on in.
Thomas on your tensors, Farm and Greg. Thunder caught him. Well, if we haven't got anything else on you, you'll get a nice long stretch for horse stealing. That was my horse you borrowed. We get this galoot into town, let's question him. He may talk about Frenchie if we promise to go easy on him. Yeah, come on. Oh, I certainly hope that Red and the Sheriff can make Penno talk. You just leave it to Red, Lizzie. That nephew of mine generally knows exactly what he's doing. Well, now, I don't know, Duchess. Now, you just put yourself in the place of that poor fella that, that Red catched. Now, see, if he don't talk, he's liable to get ten years. And then if he does talk against Frenchie... Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, Red. He wouldn't crack. He said Frenchie would get him if he did. Of course, if I hadn't let Frenchie make fools out of all of us in court... Now, wait a minute, partner. That wasn't your fault. That was me being more stupider than usual. You have the right idea, Red. Trying to take Frenchie without no gunplay. So we wind up getting one of his strong-arm men. Why, that's like trying to kill a centipede by cutting off one of its legs. Duchess, why don't you take Libby on home to supper? I've got a little business yet in town. A little business? Yeah, a little unfinished business. I've still got to close my deal with Frenchie. You know, I would give all this just to see that stupid look on Ryder's face again when he found out that he was not going to put Frenchie Beaumont in jail. As long as the price is on my face and not on my head, Frenchie, that's not too bad. Perhaps what is inside your head makes your head worth not too much. After what happened in court today, you may be right. If you had let us know you were coming, I would have had the boys roll out the red plush carpet. It's the thought that counts, Frenchie. Thanks just the same. May I buy you a drink on your great success today? No, I just came in on business. I thought maybe you could give me some information. But of course. You're the first duelist I've ever known, Frenchie. How does a man go about getting into a duel? I don't understand. Well, isn't there some sort of formality about the way you duelists issue challenges? Like throwing a glass of wine in your opponent's face or <laughs> slapping him with a glove? <laughs> Oh, really, Ryder, really? Well, you take Jerry Brooks. He didn't know any more about this duelist code than I do. How'd you get him to accept your challenge? Uh, to the best of my recollection, he made some comments in public reflecting on my reputation. Being a gentleman of honor, naturally, I resented it. Naturally. Being a gentleman, you kept your temper under control. No, Ryder. I rather believe I lost control momentarily and hit him. With a glove? Without a glove. Well, that's the information I wanted. I didn't know you duelists ever hit a man just barehanded. Like that. Are you cowardly? I don't think it's being a coward, Frenchie, hitting a man who's never lost a duel. Am I to understand that you are challenging me? If challenge is the word for it. The usual place, Hangman's Oak. Exactly one hour after sunrise. Exactly one hour after sunrise. And Frenchie, you doggone well better be there. That man is a fool. Yeah, I'm not so sure. Of course he is a fool. Wouldn't a smart man rather be known as a live coward? And a dead redhead? <laughs> a dead redhead, huh? <laughs> That's good, Frenchie. <laughs> a dead redhead. <laughs> Why, you long-legged local lump? Is this all the appreciation I get for bringing you up? Taking care of you the way I've done? Now you want to go and get yourself killed in a duel. You don't think much of me with a duel and pistol, do you, Duchess? Red Rider, other men Frenchie Beaumont killed be them good shot, too. Us too, Red. Even my brother. Why, tee piece to Tommy Hawk, Red. Didn't you see the way that he plugged McCullum? A dead center. And, and you know McCullum used to ride with the Texas Rangers, too. But don't you see that after all Frenchie's done to me, after what happened in court today? No, I guess nobody sees but me. Red Rider? 
Yeah, son. Don't you worry. I'm me praying for you. Thanks, son. Would you, Maine? Thank you so much. And now, if you are ready. I'm ready, willing, and I hope able. Since you challenge me, the first choice of the pistols should be mine. However, since they are my pistols... You understand what is to happen, Ryder? This is my first duel. Maybe you better explain it to me. Start back to back. When the handkerchief is dropped, walk ten paces, then turn, and may the best man win. I'm ready. Very well, then. He's red. He's red. Are you still alive? Sort of. Boy, it's just a scratch, Red. Frenchy, you just creased him. He moved so fast, my reflexes pulled the trigger too early. It would not happen again. He's very lucky. Red Rider, right, afraid me no pram so good for you. That's where you're wrong, son. The only thing that stood between me and eternity just now was your prayer. Help me up, Buckskin. Well, I sure will, Red. There. Hmm, me not very good. Oh, that's all right, son. You know, practice makes perfect. That reminds me of the time when I was with Wild Bill Hickok. I was his chief deputy, you know. Uh-oh, you better get out of here before your Aunt Dutch is catching you. Me not worrying about any duchess. Me don't want to wake him up Red Ryder. Oh, now look, Red. That, that wasn't his fault. I told the young to do it. I, I was I'm telling... awful sorry I woke you up, Red Ryder. That's all right. I wasn't asleep, son. Yeah, but what incarnation are you doing out here? You know that you've got to get to rest. I've rested enough. But you know what doctors say, Red Ryder? Well, tarnation to the That You know that you're, you're weak from shock. Do I look weak? Yeah, I hey, where do you think you're going? Now, look, Red, would you do me a favor? Go on and get back in there, would you? You know, I've just been thinking. I can't get out of the notion that there's got to be some explanation why Frenchie never packs a 45 like the rest of us. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Now you are going to catch it. I don't want no argument, Red. We're taking you back to your room. That's where you're wrong, Duchess. Nobody's taking me in and place the thunder. You know, can ride a horse yet? I can't, huh? You know, I'm going back to Hangman's Oak and try and find out why I got this. Now, just what in blistering blazes do you expect to find at Hangman's Oak? If you want to know, you can come along. Me come along too, Red Rider. You bet you are. I've got a lot of plain and fancy scouting to do. Wait, come on, let's go. Look, partner. I'm a patient man, but will you please tell me what in all get out you hope to find by coming clean out here? Well, I can't get it through my thick head that just because I was using a dueling pistol, I should have missed such a big target. Well, what in tarnation are you doing now? You see him something? I sure do, compadres. You see what that is? Them little lead balls. That's right, a little lead ball shot out of one of Frenchy's dueling pistols. Hey, Red, you know you wasn't fooling when you said you missed that maverick. So did somebody else. That could be Jerry Brooks or even McCollum's. Hmm, I don't get it, Red. Did you ever know me to shoot that badly? No. Never. You hit him silver dollar twice before falling to ground. Pretty good little press agent, didn't he? And McCollum, you know I saw him shoot the head off a rattlesnake at 50 yards? Uh, and uh, that was from the hip, too. So wouldn't you say there's something wrong with those pistols of Frenchies? Wh why, that low-down, no-good, side-winding, back-biting, lily-livered, contemptible cow thief. You just let me at him. Let me at him. I'll tear him into strips and make rawhide out of him. That's what I'll do. I'll shoot him to that burn full of holes that when he sneezes, he'll sound like an acordine. I'll, I'll cut off his ear. Whoa, Buckskin, whoa. Uh, wh 
Former Chief Deputy to Wild Bill Hickok, would you do all that to a man unless you'd proved your case first? They'd rather be him right, Buckskin. Only guessing now. Don't know him for sure yet. Oh, a press agent. Little Redskin would make a mighty fine Philadelphia lawyer. But that's our problem. The men the Frenchie killed never had a chance to investigate after. Those pistols are probably locked up somewhere where nobody can get at them. But then, uh, then a chief deputy to Wild Bill Hickok. Uh, well, that is, used to be chief deputy. I say we ought to get a search warrant. So he'd get suspicious, huh, and dispose of the pistols? Yeah, but what are we going to do, Red? We're riding for town. Oh, all right. <laughs> Little Beaver, run inside, and if Miss Libby's in there, ask her to step out here for a moment, would you? You betcha. I ain't big enough fool to be calling you a fool, Red, but only a fool would be foolish enough to be doing the fool things that you're doing, uh, if you can get the drift. Your drift is so deep that the only thing I can figure out is that you'd turn me over your knee and smack me if I was about 15 years younger and two feet shorter. <laughs> you, you mean three feet shorter. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Red, I can't tell you how relieved I was when I found out it was only a scratch. But what are you doing in town? You should be home resting. I'm here to get a story for your front page that'll sell your paper like hotcakes. What on earth are you talking about? Just have Tom hold up printing the paper a while. Buckskin. Hey, and you ain't alone, sonny boy. As much confidence as I got in your Uncle Red, still... Okay, little beaver, you reckon that you could teach me that there prayer you was saying the other night? Good boy, good boy. Before, that if you would just let me know in advance you were coming here, we could roll out the red plush carpet. That's right. I guess I forgot. Well, then, perhaps next time. Yeah, next time. If you are still here. That's odd. I'm surprised that you are still here. I'll bet you are, Frenchie. In all justice to you, Ryder, I would like you to know that you are extremely fast. Of course, I must tell myself that to salve my pride. I know all about your pride because it was mine brought me back here. You should be very proud that you made me miss your brain. You claim that you never missed a man before. Neither have I with a 45. You see those beer mugs up over the door? Yes, Pat. Just keep watching them. Why are you shooting at my place? I'm just trying to convince you that I don't usually miss, as I unfortunately did yesterday morning. What has that to do with me? That's something I'm going to find out, Frenchie, because not only do I rarely miss with these, I don't very often miss with this, either. Are you imbecile? I should shoot you down right here. That's the general idea. I'm ready if you are. You mean you are challenging me again? We're going to finish what we started yesterday morning right here and now. Right. Are you in your right senses? I'm tired of stalling around with you, Beaumont. You going to go get those pistols? Or do you want everybody here to know what a low-down, yellow-spine Jasper you really are? Blackjack, go get me my pistols. Right, Frenchie. Both loaded. You certainly don't take many chances, do you? Ah, 
I aimed at those other two beer mugs with your guns and missed them by two feet, just as I missed you yesterday morning. Brings down your average, doesn't it? No, Frenchie, this time I think I hit the target plumb center. Give those back to me. Very clever, Frenchie. Both guns bored out of line. So no matter which one you get, you just allow for the difference and... <laughs> Thunder? Down there. There, there is the old, only real gentleman in the house. 